This podcast is brought to you by Bonus Room Productions and We Own This Town. I am Jason T. Mears, Esquire. And I'm Kelly Hoyle Bullock. And we are San Dimas Today. How's it going, Kelly? Pretty good, JT. Uh, I am no longer in my closet. I'm sitting here at my desk with this uh, fancy new little podcast mic I got. So maybe it's making me sound better. I don't know. You sound like a man who had to cancel a very fancy vacation and then decided to use that money to buy a podcasting microphone for the quarantine times when you were podcasting about a movie series that is not your normal movie series that you would post- podcast about from home. You know, that's the kind of theory that I would expect in a movie script. Okay, perfect. <laughs> perfect. Oh, so, uh, dude, it, it, it's been a couple days. You've watched The Fast and the Furious. I did. Uh, the Fast and the Furious, I watched it in the AM. That tends to be my most attentive uh, movie watching time. I'm going to tell you just, just right off the bat, I did find myself enjoying it. Uh, despite the terrible music, <laughs> the music is so bad. It's so bad. I could look this up, but I don't care to normally w- the thing that you and I go for here with uh, bill and Ted movies is like heavily researching stuff and really finding out what was going on behind the scenes. I don't want to do that for this music because <laughs> it feels like it was either a limp biscuit or limp biscuit wannabes. Sure. And that was like the entire film. Like um, it, it, it I, I'm just going to assume it was the set list at Woodstock '99, where all the <laughs> <laughs> yes. fires and the mayhem and assaults right. and everything took place. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> I, I think you're a- accurate. I think they they just took the set list from that and then transposed it over this. Um, okay, so at what point did you realize that Brian was a federal agent? You know. I, I'm going to be honest with you here. That is a detail I had known from uh, seeing bits and pieces of the movie before. Okay. Uh, but essentially when he opens his mouth and he sounds just like Johnny Utah, then right. I know <laughs> I know he's a cop. <laughs> right. I mean, he is. He, he, this movie really is point break with drag racing. Definitely. And- um, I will also say that Vin Diesel, um, he kind of – became lovable to me in that Patrick Swayze kind of a way. And I didn't see that coming. I know it's amazing. I'm so happy you're picking up on this because when I watch it, it is totally the point break vibe that I get. And and there's also like, I feel there's a James Dean vibe to this whole thing too, you know, which is, is just pretty sweet. Like they, they, they hit the right genre notes with this movie. Yeah. And if they never would have made a sequel, I think this thing would have been like a a cult classic regardless, despite the terrible music. Yeah, I can agree with that. You know, oh, oh, I I did also want to add um, Ted Levine, you know, freaking Buffalo Bill popping up is like the boss, the cop boss, I guess, (laughs) of of Brian. Uh, That was nice. Right. <laughs> I, one thing I loved was the Die Hard thing that they really amplified. If you if you think back to Die Hard, when the federal agents show up, they're all kind of wimps, right? Like they're they're invading Nakatomi Tower, and one of them gets like pricked by a thorn bush, and is like, "Ow!" Yeah, you know, and true. Like, and and so you <laughs> you you've got the the street uh, racers in this movie drinking Corona and living fast and like being real men's men. And then you've got Brian's boss ordering like decaf lattes and like just being, <laughs> just being like, uh, like didn't they have like frappuccinos at one point? Yeah. Right, right. They did. It was like <laughs> totally trying to, uh, uh, feminize, uh, Brian's Brian's boss. And it's, it's just so funny to me how flagrant <laughs> that is now. But I mean, I don't know. I'm a man who enjoys a cafe au lait. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. So, um, I, I like more milk in my coffee than than coffee. So maybe I'm a little bit more attuned to that. But <laughs> no, no. I, I, you know, I have to have uh, half and half. If I have fat free half and half, I will go crazy. Um, oh, I've seen it. I think you punch <laughs> a hole for a ball over fat free half and half. You're like uh, Chris Farley in that uh, uh, SNL coffee skit. <laughs> <laughs> um now let's see uh some other things you know you, you were talking about it being a great genre flick well when my boy jesse pops up it's like instantly you know he's gonna die he has to yeah. die <laughs> it's yeah, like, like oh 
there's there, there's there's a little weakling that's the mascot for everybody. He's going to be the inciting incident for, for the uh, final act. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You should be at MIT, man, because you're going to die. <laughs> right. Definitely do not be here because you are going to die on a car racing related accident or incident. <laughs> Hector. Uh, if, if you remember Hector, the organizer of the drag race, uh, and I guess he was part of the, whatever the Hispanic gang was, mm -hmm. um, that guy, that actor, man, he's been in so many things. I had just recently rewatched training day and he is oh. part of the Hispanic gang that like almost kills Ethan Hawke. Okay. Wait, uh, wait, wait, wait. When did, when did training day come out? Was training like day came out the same year, my friend. I, I, oh I, my God. I, it's a 2001. Yeah. So th this had to be like, th this had to be pre 9 11 because I'm picking up on a lot of Hispanic fear. Mm -hmm. And any movie made in 2002 or after was all about like Muslim fear, right? I think so. Um, I mean, like, is, is yeah, that's is a that's good point. And these, these, I'm sure, I, if I remember right, they probably both came out in the summer, right? Summer of 2001. Yeah. I, I can't see a studio holding on to the Fast and the Furious for like the award season premiere. So I can't, I can't <laughs> see it coming up in like September, October. But yeah, it had to be a summer movie for sure. Maybe late summer even because who's going to take a chance on a drag racing film? You know? <laughs> you know, uh, I, I, it definitely, I thought it worked. It's, it seems like a rewatchable movie. It's probably from, from seeing it from, from beginning to end now. Uh, I, I can understand why, like in the past where I've seen it come on TV, I've like ended up watching it for a little while, you know, I definitely can see how this thing has lived on as I yeah. guess, you know, I know it's big budget, but it still feels like a cult classic. It seems like this whole sure, series sure. is a devoted, there's a devoted fan base, right? Oh, there, there is. And it. It definitely gets weirder, man. It, it, I, I don't want to – just don't read anything. And then a couple okay. of weeks, just, just okay. keep watching the movies and, like, watch the natural progression because, as they say, shit gets weird. And I, I, I love it. Um, okay. As far as what I know about the the series, the only other thing that I've ever really heard is how the third one, Tokyo Drift, has nobody from this movie in it. And that's okay because – I'm I'm perfectly aware of uh, many great franchises that 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 have that film in their series, right? Uh, Nightmare sure. on Elm Street has one, Halloween yep. has one, and maybe yep. it, I'm just thinking of slasher franchises here. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, maybe a closer analog would be the uh, Planet of the Apes series. Okay, okay. So I I, I want you to think more of. Uh, with Tokyo Drift, it's more of a Beneath the Planet of the Apes than it is like Return to the Planet of the Apes. Ooh, okay. All right. Yeah. You're I blowing mean, like, my mind right now. We're a Bill and Ted podcast doing a podcast about the Fast and the Furious, and I'm referencing a deep cut for the Planet of the Apes franchise. So, man, all bets are off is all I'm saying, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. What what else? Uh so you, you like Vin Diesel, Paul Walker, you got some serious Keanu vibes from, which I think is absolutely accurate. I think that that's what that guy was going for. And you know what? Both of them do a really good job. I feel their charisma is real. Genuine. They have that Keanu and Alex Winter thing. Um, they Like you can tell that they just really hit it off. Sure. Yeah. I mean, and again, totally reminds me of uh, Keanu and Swayze, right? Sure. Like, you yeah. just have to imagine like, Incredible hijinks offset, you know, when yep. they're all hanging out. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Although, I, you know, the hijinks offset on this film were all Corona based. <laughs> True. You can have any beer as long as it's a Corona. Absolutely. You know, you know, JT, I'm just, I'm just living my life one quarter mile at a time. That's all you can do, man. That's all you can do. <laughs> and also as we progress, I want you to focus in. I want you to just, I, I've been trying to start to meditate in the, uh, uh, safer at home environment because otherwise I'll murder my family. Uh, not really. I love them, but, um, like just trying to calm myself and with meditation, they're like, you know, focus on one thing. Just remember this thing and, and go back to this thing. As we progress through this exercise of watching all of these movies, I want you to remember that Vin Diesel was essentially a drag racer and not, not an exceptionally talented driver. And uh -huh. also that his thing that he was doing 
was basically robbing truck drivers of DVD players. So <laughs> hold, hold on to that. Hold it in your palm. Sure, core. sure. Just, just that... Keep it in your palm. <laughs> and, and, and on a cold, cold night, like open the palm <laughs> and see the ember of that and blow on it. Just keep it a little warm. Keep it okay. alive until, okay. we, until we move forward. Because that, that definitely occurred to me, you know, the, the whole like DVD player <laughs> aspect of this film. <laughs> It's like absolutely instantly dated. It's <laughs> mm-hmm. And how like the Vietnamese gang, it's like, hey, they legally bought their DVD players. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just yep. a lot of them. <laughs> right. right. Okay. So um, the ending, how'd you, what'd you think about the ending? Uh, it, it was a l- little bit of a point break ish as well, except less letting the dude go off and sacrifice him to a big wave. Right. I mean, sure. The, the, the stakes, the stakes seemed a little bit lower, uh, uh, at the, at the end of this than it did uh point break, but yeah, you know, yeah. I, I, yeah. I guess I could see the need for their, them having a little funsies, uh, drag race at the end, but, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm glad Vin <laughs> Diesel survived. <laughs> And yeah. I, you know, I'm not sure how Paul Walker is going to explain this to the top brass. Uh, right. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I don't know if that ha- if, if that resolution's going to happen in Too Fast, Too Furious. Oh man! <laughs> oh man! See, I'm so excited because I know I already know that the title to our next episode is going to be Too Fast, Too Curious, and you just set that up for me. So it's perfect. It's great. It's great. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. So you know that this movie launches an international blockbuster franchise now mm-hmm. because we're in 2020. Let's say it's 2002, right? You've seen the fast and the furious and you are reading an entertainment weekly that they have greenlit a <laughs> sequel called too fast, too furious. What are you expecting? More DVD players. Okay. More DVD players. <laughs> <laughs> 2002, there was a lot going on, right? Like we were probably goofing around AOL chat rooms. Was that, is, is that where we were? <laughs> Do you know, uh, we have dial up? <laughs> if, if we, we, we had dial up. I'll tell you this. Um, I married my wife in 2002 and yeah. she and I spent a lot of time in AOL chat rooms and instant messenger staying up late, just, just instant messaging each other like crazy we'll save the drunken wheelchair race story for another podcast sure sure absolutely. but our our place in life we were both very aware of uh, yeah, that year sure. <laughs> <laughs> that just, i don't believe i had cable yeah, but uh, uh <laughs> but no okay so i'm i'm in the grocery store line and i'm reading an entertainment weekly and i'm like oh hell yes too fast too furious where can it go from here gosh i mean I honestly know nothing about this sequel, and so I have no idea what returning cast shows up. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd like to think that maybe uh, Brian O'Connor and Dominic Toretto start working together somehow. Ooh, um, okay. You know that would be that would be a, a nice way to go. I want more Michelle Rodriguez. Honestly, yeah, yeah. Uh, she was great supporting character. Love that she popped up as like the uh, uh, a, a really good driver. Right, yeah, that, that I mean, was like, like a yeah. nice turn. So um, she definitely outshined uh, uh, Jordana Brewster. I have to be honest with you, but uh, it's fine. She was fine too. Okay, all right, <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of Mrs. Brewster, so um, we'll agree to disagree there. But I, I, <laughs> I know that you love Anna Lucia. Anything related to Lost, um, man. So this next movie, I'm trying to figure out the best way to get you pumped and primed for it. Because it's different, all right? There, there's Keep in mind is that the first movie is all about drag racing. Mm-hmm. The second movie is all about street racing. So, like, turns. <laughs> yes, yes. The, car, <laughs> the cars need to go more than a tenth of a mile. Okay. It's a uh, big deal, big deal. But uh, they, you're going to get a lot of ludicrous in this. Oh, okay. So, you know, the first movie had Ja Rule... So is is Ludacris coming in to replace the Jaw Rule? Is that what you're telling me? Ludacris comes in in such a manner that you're like Jaw Rule, who, you know, yeah. like, what, 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 like Ludacris. Jaw Rule was a bit of a buster in the first movie, you know. Sure, so. sure, sure. But it, it, it's, 
I like I like the racing in the second movie a lot more than the first. And that's about the only thing that I like about the second movie more than the first. But Ooh. I can't Yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna get a little uh, trade off, I, I take it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, like like I said last time we spoke, the second movie, for my money, is kind of fucking terrible um i went blue there but it's it there's some stuff to like there there's some buddy stuff going on that's pretty good um there's some good character work but oh man it's it's the pits i don't know how they decided that this was i don't know how this franchise was resurrected after too fast too furious i i I just want you to buckle in and get ready for this Okay. And know that the um, night is always darkest before the dawn, because once we get through this one, and there, there's stuff to enjoy in it, you're gonna you're gonna find some fun stuff in it. Once we get through this one, and we start Tokyo Drift, you're gonna be introduced to the most charismatic character in all of the Fast and the Furious franchise, and okay. I can't wait to meet him. I like the setup, you know, so I will say I did, I did do a little bit of research on the first film and I'm not, I'm not sure if you knew this, uh, but did you know that Timothy Oliphant was to be the original Dominic in this movie? Shut the front door. I am not joking. Shut the front door. And it was the studio. The studio was basically saying, we'll green light it if you can get Oliphant, but I guess he had just done Gone in 60 Seconds, and he declined the role. Okay. Okay. And so uh, uh, another producer suggested Vin Diesel, which I like, can't imagine the role not being Vin Diesel after just seeing the first movie here. It's, it's an interesting what if, you know? You know you, you know my feelings for Mr. Oliphant. You, you, uh, I'm, I'm I, mean, I think we're guy. both, yeah, I mean, we're both yeah. in complete love with the guy. Yeah, so I would love to see that i'd like i'd like to see that more than i'd like to see eric stoltz's marty mcfly i mean like that that's how into it i am but <laughs> hey I, now i love me some stoltz <laughs> I, yeah, I love stoltz too um what i'm saying is i can't i can't fathom anybody but vin diesel playing dominic toretto I, I, sure. just, never bill and ted are pretty iconic in my life i i I could maybe see somebody else playing Bill or Ted more than I can see somebody playing Dominic Toretto. That, that wow. role wow. is so okay. Vin Diesel to me. I, 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 I just, I can't even. Uh, mm. You've blown my mind. It's a, it's, it's a weird little tidbit. And uh, I'll take it one step further, sir. I reject your reality. What you've just told me is not, <laughs> it, it never happens. <laughs> never happened you're lying to me and you're you know, lying to everyone that listens to this podcast and let's just pretend that didn't happen well let me just say the research is half ass and not everything <laughs> on wikipedia is true so lies again, lies again. If, if not everything on wikipedia is true then uh i don't know how i graduated uh law school so thank you all right man well i can't wait to uh discuss the second movie with you <laughs> Oh, I can't wait either. Oh, man. Okay, so Too Fast, Too Furious. Get ready to live. Wear a breathable shirt. I'll, I'll say that because it gets okay. it gets a little it get, gets a little gets a little hot. Maybe I'll uh, open a window. Do it. Do it. Do it. As long as none of your neighbors are breathing in through your windows with COVID, uh, you should be good. Um, I'm so excited to talk about this one. And then, oh, after this one, we, we, we get to Tokyo Drift. And then, man. Okay, so all right. All right. Go. Watch the movie. I've already rewatched uh, Too Fast, Too Furious once uh, for this. I'm going to go ahead and do it again, even though I have the feelings that I've discussed for it. And I, I just can't wait to talk to you about it. Yeah, you got to stay fresh, you know? Oh, oh I'm, I'm staying fresh. You know, don't yeah. let me blindside you with another casting what if, that's for sure. <laughs> no. Hey, you know what? Keep blindsiding me. Keep blindsiding me. I, I got nothing else to live for. So this is, this is really the only thing that's getting me up in the morning. All right. Well, it sounds good. I hope this is as fun for the listeners as it is for us. I'm sure it is. It, how um, can it not be? <laughs> <laughs> and we just hope everyone's staying safe out there. JT. Be excellent to each other. And party online. I will say this. So the Tremors movies, the last two that they did, Mm-hmm. So they were going to they were they had major studio backing that ended up pulling out 
And so they financed and did everything in South Africa and filmed everything in South Africa. And Jamie Kennedy became a part of the franchise. Okay. So it's like Jamie Kennedy and Michael Gross, like starring in the last two. And it's a lot of CGI and stuff, but it's, it's like not the worst. Okay, the worst. No, no like I, I, that, that sounds like a team coming together to creatively overcome yeah. some obstacles and make something interesting. I, I, I'm impressed that Michael Gross was really the one to carry it all through. Um, God bless. Him. Did, uh, uh, but the for, the fourth movie is is the worst one ever. It's it's just it was one of the hardest movies I ever had to sit through oh, because it's like an origin story. Oh no! So it no. goes back a hundred years. Nope. <laughs> No, and everybody is like an ancestor of everybody. Nobody wants. Nobody wants that. Let me ask you this: Does a worm ever eat Reba McIntyre? Uh, Reba, sadly, uh, just as Kevin Bacon never reappeared in any of the movies after the first one. Fuck it, I'm out. <laughs>